So let's take a look at some questions, other math questions, that primarily have to do with reference table T, that are not part of the moles stoichiometry unit. I already went through those questions and explained them. And this is a hit list here to the left of the types of problems you need to know from that unit. The types of questions that I'm going to go over in these next parts are from the other parts of the course, but it's the math problems. Sometimes students don't feel comfortable with the math problems, so why not put them together and go through them? So let's do that. Now, don't do any of these questions without a reference table and a calculator. So check them out. So here are the questions. These are questions that I cut and pasted from the 2017 Regents exams, where you have to do some calculations. So check them out, work on them. The handouts for this are on my website, nychemcoach.com, and the answers also. So I'm just trying to provide some explanations here or ways you can solve these. And the answers, again, I said in the questions are on the website. They're PDF files. You can download them. You're more than welcome. So check out these problems, and then come on back, and let's see how you did. Okay, so check out these answers. For number one, right, the temperature that represents the highest average kinetic energy, of course, is the highest temperature. The problem is that all of the units should be either all in Kelvin or all in Celsius. Well, if you go to reference table T, of course it's easier to convert Celsius to Kelvin because all you're doing is adding 273. And when you do that, you'll find that choice 3 is the best answer. Now, for question 2 and question 3, and really for question 5, we are using the combined gas law. P1, V1, T1 over T1 is equal to P2V2 over T2. So let's take a look. So the answer is 800 kilopascals. Let's make sure that you know how to get there. My suggestion, and I keep telling this to my students, is write the equation down that you need, whether it's a part two or a part one question. In question two, you're going to determine the new pressure. Now let me go ahead and erase this so we have some room here. So I'm looking for the new pressure, so that's P2, right, of a 6.4 liter sample of oxygen gas. So that is on this side, 6.4 liters is volume, 300 Kelvin is temperature, and they already have it in Kelvin, so you don't have to convert it. Temperature has to be in Kelvin. If it's given to you in Celsius, switch it. For pressure and volume, as long as the units are constant on both sides of the equal sign, you're fine. So 6.4 liters and 100 kilopascals. Now, other than P2, on the right side, we have 2.4 liters and 900 Kelvin. Okay, so from here you have to get P2. The answer is 800. Okay, you can cross multiply and then divide, and the answer is 800. If you set it up and you can't get the right answer, then you have a math problem, not a chemistry problem. So take it in steps. Don't plug everything in in one step when you're doing the math. Take it slowly. Write it down and keep going. Okay, in question three, again, we're using the combined gas law. So let me do a little bit of cleaning up here. 2.3 liters is, is the answer. All right, so if you got that, you can go ahead and move on. But I'm going to erase this and explain. Okay. So, you're given these initial conditions. So, I have 1 atm, I have 2.5 liters, and 298 kelvin. And now we want to determine the volume, so this time it's V2, and we're at STP. If you forget, standard temperature and pressure are on the front of the reference table. So, I need to be consistent with my pressure. I started with atms. I'm going to end with one ATM, so really pressure stayed constant. But for Celsius, I have no choice. Don't use Kelvin. I'm sorry, use Kelvin, don't use Celsius. So 273. 
Once again, cross multiply and divide, take it in steps, and the answer is 2.3 liters. For question four, it says state one change in temperature and one change in pressure that will cause the gas in the cylinder to behave more like an ideal gas. Any real gas is going to behave more like an ideal gas at a higher temperature and lower pressure. That's in general. So I guess you could be specific as far as how high or how low, but I don't think you need to. Right? Higher temperature, lower pressure. And then finally in number five, this is a word problem with PV over T is equal to PV over T. So again, write the equation down, P1, V1, T1 is equal to P2, V2, T2. All right, it says the sample of gas, the pressure is kept constant, so right away, let's cross out pressure and Kelvin temperature is doubled. So you can put in numbers if you want. So you could say uh, T1 was 1 and T2 was 2. And what happened to the volume? Or what if V1 was 1? What would happen to V2? Well, if you remember, it's a direct relationship. It would also be doubled. So this is the start of some of the math problems that you'll see on the regents. These are, of course, um, Right into the gas law problems along with the temperature problem. Check out some more videos. Work hard. Good luck.